The red scarf. A red scarf leans down the waist of a dark silhouette. Her moves are somber, resembling the death she's deserting. Passing the gnarled old oak tree near the gate with leaves to be taken by the wind blows against her head. A sudden flicker of cruel lightning storms in her eyes. A raven calls approvingly at her senses, catching the spirit of the place. The sun has fled, leaving more space for the moon to come up to be seen on the fading light of sunset bend. A few whiffs of air behind are sissing and whistling down the track left behind. The wind starts blowing dust and leaves into her body and face. Come on now, the whispers chime in. Let's see where she's going. But well, we can't leave these grounds. Who said so? Nobody is just that we can't. Ask the old trimmer. He is not around, and I can't read a sign saying we can't follow her. And how are we supposed to get out there? of wind and leaves carried with dust. I'll be the leaf in her hair. I'll be the scarf taken by the winds. And I'll be the dust covering her body and soul. Ten steps taken forward, a last glance at the stone to her right. Here rests our beloved father, Mr. Roland Piles, doctor of numbers and killer of charms. Hadn't she come here to pay honours to a real murderer, this would have brought up a warm smile on her lips. But her inner son was dead, with the acid corroding the waist of her heart made of steel. Expected to walk out of the ribs grated by the memory of a pile of human flesh lying in a blood-flooded kitchen, herself was exploring the truth of this moment in two times. Creeping down the spine of the cemetery trail, the frightful ghost of a slaughterer watches her with patience from the top of a monument. The stone angels around, each carrying the knowledge of tears, growing moss and wickened, for passing ants and resting flying bugs to carefully smile their superior ephemeral infinity. Where is she going? Let's follow her. Let us see. Her legs walked her through the open gate, closing with the urn of the dead to grab a piece of her searing flesh. They were too cold, and she seemed dead inside. But her cover was still soft and beamed with weavers of hot paws of pumping light. There had to be a chance for a second try at living. Looking back, as she closes the door to her personal home, she perceives the ghosts of her late hours slaughter. The fire lit in her eyes speaks of the blood she carried to the surface. She wishes to remember this. The wind menaces her with a burst of restless leaves and dust cutting her breath. 
There are cars down in the city that hum desperately all the way up here. The three little ghost fans she's already got are wailing into the falling night. She closes her eyes as she leaves the gate to its guarding post. The red scarf remains hanging on the pikes of the screeching cemetery gate.